An insult to thousands of backers, Mighty No. 9 is an exercise in mediocrity, aggravated by appalling visuals and performance problems. Three years and four million dollars was not enough to save KJ Inafune's project. Mega Man fans will certainly be disappointed. Everything that was added to keep this from being a straight up ripoff only ended up getting in the way and brought the entire experience crumbling down. These are actual quotes from the reviews for Mighty No. 9. It seems that with most, though not all, of these reviews, people seem to be more interested in reviewing the Kickstarter, the management, and Inafune himself, rather than the project created. While it's true the Kickstarter had a lack of transparency, broken promises, and the recent trailer for Mighty No. 9 wasn't great. And make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on prom night. Let's look at the action platformer for what it is, rather than what everybody wanted it to be. You play as Beck, Robot Mighty No. 9, in an all too familiar story of eight other robots going rogue and you being the only one left to stop them. Each mighty number you face has their own themed level, culminating with a one on one fight at the end of the stage with the mighty number in question. Moments before he fell, he's tragic death. Ooh, sorry, back of music, it's getting cut. Defeating one grants you access to a transformation that allows Beck to use the powers of that mighty number. More interestingly, it will have the mighty number help you on a future stage where they may disable a hazard trap or take out some enemies to help you speed along. Each Mighty Number has a strong theme that is emphasized in their frantic character design, average stage design, and unfortunately, that level of detail didn't seem to bleed over to the grunt like foes you face in each stage. There's little to no variety in them, and there's no sense of theme or purpose for that robot to be there. The gameplay in Mighty Number no. 9 is fairly unique and adds a twist to what people may expect. Damaging an enemy enough allows Beck to dash and absorb them. The quicker you absorb them, the more points you earn. This is not all you earn, though. Absorbing an enemy gives you a temporary boost in things like speed or power, which will be pivotal for speedruns as to knowing which enemies to skip and which ones have the right ability to speed through the next section. Speaking of speedruns, this game seems to complement the community well. Beck's dash allows him to skip a variety of platforms and hazards, which is questionable to me. On one hand, I love the sense of moving fast and knocking seconds off my current high scores. On the other hand, it makes the level design and platforming sections feel like an afterthought. However, you will have to be thorough and timely if you want to earn an S ranking on the stages. This can make up for the ability to just speed through the stages and maybe earning a lower level ranking. The gameplay loop is satisfying and undeniably fun. The rest of the game is where the problems arise. The graphics look like they are out of a 90s Saturday morning cartoon. We are the Martians, the fun ugly Martians. We are the Martians, the fun ugly Martians. While this doesn't bother me as I'm focused on the gameplay of these style games, I do have problems with the color palette. The lack of depth and shadows. It makes judging the foreground from the background more difficult. And it makes the world feel slightly empty and lifeless. Speaking of lifeless, the in game cutscenes are basically static 3D sets with no lip sync of any variety. It's that Dr. Blackwell. He's the one behind this. Blame him! <laughs> we at Cherry Dime are doing all we can to help fix the situation. The game does offer voice acting that ranges from Beck's charming and I can do this sounding mentality, which I feel fits very well. Yes, sir. To Dr. Saunders' over the top borderline parody of a performance. All right, quit your lollygagging. It's up to us to stop those rampaging bots. The game does have a Japanese voice acting option in the menu, so if you absolutely can't stand the voice acting, there's always that. The mighty number of bosses explore the same range of too much to just silly enough. One of the choices that did bother me, though, was Call. I love her design, and I like her robotic voice acting, which is clearly intentional. 
configure controls and view tips. You can also adjust these settings in-game. Though I was confused. Why does every other robot sound like a human? Couldn't get a beat on Avi, kid. Have to leave him up to you. And she sounds like a text-to-voice program. These near-empty backgrounds and static-style cutscenes work just fine for an 8-bit 2D platformer. But in the context of this game, they come across as a budget being stretched too thin, which I'm almost certain is what happened here. Mighty No. 9 offers a variety of extra bonus content, though none of which I found more appealing than just playing through the game again. The content includes a solo challenge, which dares you to finish an empty and lifeless test room faster than their set time, timed runs through the game's already existing levels, complete with high scores, online races which see you competing with another player online to see who can get the fastest time through a stage, and online co-op, allowing a second player to play as Beck's sister, Call, and use a variety of defensive abilities to try to finish the level together. These options don't open up until you're almost finished with the game, so it really limits the amount of people that could even be playing online. I'm not sure why this choice was made. I would have much rather had it so that you can start from the beginning of the game and play through it online. The story is not something we're even going to talk about in this review, because it's so bare bones. It's not like you're going to get spoilers that ruin the experience. Finally, there's a boss rush mode, which in theory sounds like it would be great, but it's bogged down by the slow transitions between the ending of one fight and the start of the next. The other thing that baffles me about all of these challenge modes is that there's no retry button in the pause menu. You have to send Beck into spikes, jump down a pit, or just let an enemy wail on you until you die in order to restart. If I know I'm not going to beat the challenge, just let me retry. Honestly, there's a lot of content in Mighty Number no. 9. There's way more than most games of this price. On top of all of this, you have a plethora of options that allow you to augment the game, such as making it easier by giving you some extra lives or health pickups, or you can go the other route and make the game harder. It has a hard difficulty and a hyper difficulty, which makes the game even tougher than hard. If you buy the game physically, you also get the Hero DLC, which gives you a retro style Beck, as well as Maniac Mode, where you die in one hit no matter what. You also get access to the Ray DLC, which I thought was surprisingly interesting. It sucks, and I repeat sucks that there is day one DLC for a game that got delayed like this. It 100% should be included. But if you buy it physically, it is included, and if you buy it digitally, the game is half the price, and it's a $5 DLC. They probably would have just raised the price of the game $5 and included it, so it's a lose-lose situation. Speaking of the DLC though, you get to play as a new character, Ray, which changed the mechanics of the game. She's a melee character whose health constantly drops, and killing enemies will raise it. If you're looking for the absolute best next generation 2D platformer, I would still recommend Shovel Knight over Mighty No. 9. However, Mighty No. 9 is a great game, with excellent gameplay, but it feels like a complement to Mega Man, rather than a replacement that many expected it to be. A 7 out of 10.